So this video will be about how to uh, program a simple sequential function chart and this would be done using uh, RSLogix 5000 version 20 and we'll be using the emulator uh, version 20. So I've already made the program. Uh, I haven't done any, any programming to it. So uh, what I've done is <clears throat> it comes standard with the uh, with the uh, main routine and then I added the sequ sequential function chart which basically I just added a routine and selected a sequential function chart um, so I need to at this point go to the main routine uh, select the JSR and then point the, the main routine to my sequential function chart now that that's done open your sequential function chart and you can start programming from there. Um, so it always starts in step zero if it's brand new and that's good because that's where you, you want it to start. If you look at the sequential function chart properties, uh, the auto naming starts at, at, you know, you have an auto naming uh, property that you can set. Uh, so you can start at 01 or 02 or whatever you want to start at. Uh, in this case, we're going to set it the default, and we're going to say if we're going to make our own tags. So at this point, we'll make a a brand new tag that says start button, start pb, and this is going to be a bool, which is a single bit, and that means it's going to stay in in step zero until the start button is pressed. Then it's going to go to this next step. Now we'll link this step to this, or this transition to this step, and then in this we want to add. So highlight the this step right, uh, step zero zero one, and then add an action body. And in the action body, we want to go ahead and make a, a series of bits. So we'll do a new tag and we'll say step bits. And then we'll make that a dent uh, so that we have several of them. And then we'll, we'll say dent one or the bit one in that dent. And then we'll go ahead and tell it to initiate bit one so in, in step one we'll have bit one turn on and then in this transition down in transition number one we'll say if step 001 is done and step bit dot one is true then transition to the next step or else just stay there you know it, it won't do anything if it's not so if this bit's not true it won't won't do anything so at this point at this step we can say It's better just to, to highlight it, just highlight it like that, and just tap it, and it comes in automatically. So at this point, we want to cut off step bit dot one, so turn it to a zero, and we want to cut on step bits dot two and then we'll make it a one okay so in this transition number two we want to go ahead and say well if step if uh, step 002 is done and 
not step bits one and step bits two is on then transition to the next step in this in this case we'll, we'll make it kind of short we'll just go ahead and tie it back to the top and in this state right here you can leave it you know if you want to see that transition if you want to see the the connections if you would but if you want to you can actually tap right click it and hit uh, hide and then if you wanted to find it you can just tap on the cursor right there and it, it'll show you so so far we we've, we've said uh, in step 0 it will not it'll stay in step 0 if transition 0 the start button is not on the start button is on then it'll go to step 1 and then in step 1 it'll turn on step bits dot 1 to a 1 and then transition one if the step bits are if, if step zero zero one is done and step bits one is on then go to step two step two will then cut on or cut off step bits dot one to a zero and then step bits two to a one and then transition it'll make sure that the step bit two or the the step 002 is done and that step bit 1 is not on and step bit 2 is on then it will go back to the very top and if start button if the start button's on then it'll keep cycling so at this point I want to verify our project then we want to download now we are in slot one so we want to download to slot one okay so just to clarify we are in program mode not run mode so as soon as we get a run mode step zero should go to a green state Okay, which it did. So it's waiting on that start button. Start button. So if we we go to monitors and let's do this. Let's minimize so that we can see what's what's actually happening. So if I put the start button, and I'll, I'll go ahead and just so you can see the bits as well. Is I'll go ahead and hit a one to the start and see it just transitions through now what we can do now if that start is dropped then it will stop now what we can do is say okay we want to add times in here like a, we want to add a timer in here for the action so let's just say 200 milliseconds for each step so we want 200 milliseconds for each step and then now we'll do the same process we'll cut it on goes 200 milliseconds and then go transitions and you can see that bit one cuts on So what we should do in step zero is cut. Well, let's let's cut this off first. We should turn off bit two. So what we can do is select edit. At this point, say step step. bit 2 and then we'll turn that to a 0 
So then we can down here in this stage, we can say and not step it to. Now what that's going to do is it's going to turn it on down here, but when it goes back up here, it's going to cut it off now. And then we'll just finalize all. So it's back in a running state. And let's see what happens now. So start bit on. Then we should see a one go into, so one, two, turn off. So you see how that works. So we can even slow that process down even more if we want. We can say, let's go four seconds. Let's go five. So now you can see when the, when the bit is being set, you'll see that it'll just flip flop between one right now and two. And what we can do is we don't have this as a timer. We don't have it as a um, a state right here so we can stop it real quick and we can add step o o done and you know what that'll do is we can throw in a timer here and then finalize this now we can see the whole transition. So, so it goes to zeros. Then it cuts on step step one. Step bit two is now on, and then when it goes back to step zero, it cuts everything off. All right, cuts step uh, step bit two off. So step bit one. Step bit two, and then when it comes back, cuts everything off. Now, what we can do is go back in here and show wire. Being this is a short program, we can see where it loops. And now, if I cut off the start and when it finishes it's going to go right here and never start again not until so right now it's waiting we know it it's this is going to be good as soon as five seconds it goes up this would be good so that's fine that's not fine and that's fine so we're waiting on the start button so at this point we just click that and it starts back. Now, real quick, I just want to go over, I mean, that's how you do a, a simple sequential function chart. Just something you can practice on with a virtual chassis. Um, again, this uses no hardware. This is using the RS Logics Emulator 5000. And we're using just a standard 5000 version 20. Um, like I said, I just wanted to show a real quick example, uh, real cut and dry of how a sequential function charge program. So main routine, JSR, to connect it through to a sequential function chart that's running and shows all the bits and everything working. So hope you enjoyed and thank you and we'll have more videos to come. Thanks.